Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We've got some fantastic videos in the works, and I'd hate for you to miss out on any of them. If you're one of our regular subscribers, thank you very much for joining us in this video. And today, we're going to be doing another celebrity skincare reaction, this time on Susan Yara. She's very kindly um, decided to share her evening routine with Harper's Bazaar as part of their Go to Bed With Me website series and so I thought we'll take this opportunity to um, review this, re review her routine, see what we want to take from it for our own routine, see if there's anything we might be able to mix up and improve and um, for those of you who don't know Susan, um, she is, she's fantastic, first of all I'm a huge 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 fan and um, she has been working in the beauty industry for 20 years, first as um, a columnist, she's been an editor and um, she's worked for various companies, beauty companies um, and recently she's found her name on YouTube where she has her own channel um, and one that she um, runs as a business called Mixed Makeup. I'll link both channels below because she's absolutely fantastic. She's really at the forefront of the skincare game. She was one of the first um, influencers to really start focusing down on ingredients rather than brands um, and products, focusing on what ingredients you need in your skincare. Um, I, I've been hugely influenced by her. Um, she isn't a skincare professional, but she does know her stuff. She's worked in the industry um, for many, many years, like I've said. And she, her approach is just really warm and supportive and informative. And I think that's really what we need. Um, we're living in a consumer age where there's so much information out there. Um, it's really hard to know what to believe and what not. And I think Susan has been really good at sharing those hints, those tips, and really helping to break down some of the barriers to people getting involved and engaging in skincare. So I'm expecting a fantastic routine from Susan. Um, it's an interesting one to do. First of all, because I think it's really good to see somebody who is so good so used to working in the industry, knows their stuff, knows their ingredients. It'd be really interesting to see what um, products she uses, if there's any new innovative brands that she incorporates in there. It's also really interesting from a personal uh, perspective because Susan's the same age as me. As we age, um, our skin changes and develops. So what was good for us in our 20s might not be the same products we're using in our mid 30s. So for me, it's really interesting to see what somebody who is so involved in skincare and really knows what they're talking about is using at the same age as me. Um, the be some products that I want to try out and incorporate into my own routine. Similarly, it's interesting to see what somebody's doing um, as, like I say, as their skin develops over time. So without further ado, let's get in. This is Susan uh, Yara and her skincare. Hey guys, have you ever scrolled through these videos, comments, and wondered who the hell is Susan Yara? It's me! And tonight I'm going to show you my nighttime skincare routine. So let's get ready for bed. Like I say, Susan was the one that really kickstarted the skincare reaction trend. So my uh, skincare trend. is generally dry. Um, it's been a little bit drier than usual. It's cold outside right now. It's winter. Um, I also just had a baby a few months ago, so that really takes a lot out of you because, especially if you like breastfeed and everything, doing my nighttime skincare routine is really important because it's the time that I get to myself, especially with two kids. One is a toddler. One is an actual baby baby. I want to make sure I'm using products that give me the most bang for my buck. Um, and that are fixing problems that you have post-pregnancy. There's really not much you can do while you're pregnant. You can't do major treatments. You can't use really strong active ingredients. So these are the things that I'm reintroducing now. Um, I'm going to use my scrunchie and my headband. Um, I always go for silk. I have silk pillows. I think silk is just really nice. It's not just nice and gentle on your skin, but it's gentle on your hair. So I'm gonna put this on first. Something oil-based is how I typically start my nighttime routine because I have makeup on, even if I'm just wearing sunscreen. So I tend to use something like this. These are the two balms I've been using. Green Clean by Pharmacy, and this is Clean It Zero. It's by Vanillico. But today, I don't want to freak everybody out because this is something different that I've been doing, um, and I do it for all of you guys. I'm going to be using this. Essentially a micellar water. It says cleansing water. It's really fancy. You guys like that? really really fancy. I feel like cosmetic formulators are really having a moment right now on social media where they're really like seeing what's being put out there, all the information and stuff, and they're coming correct with it basically. They're like, no, 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 this ingredient is fine for you. This product is fine for you. And a friend of mine who is a cosmetic formulator has been watching my videos. So she sent me this and she didn't want me to judge it whatsoever. She said I was going to love this stuff. I could definitely use it as my first cleanse and it was going to remove all of my makeup and, and be tough on my makeup, but not tough on my skin. And I've obviously been using a lot of it, so I can't wait to tell you guys what it is because I don't even know. I'm gonna use one of those microfiber kind of cleansing towels just because it doesn't soak up too much. I feel like it's gonna help 
just remove the makeup. So I'm going to just put a little on the edge of it. And I'm going to hold it to my eye just for a few seconds. And then I'm just going to gently wipe. The reason why I'm pressing it to my eye first is because you want it to loosen up the makeup, right? And if you're not doing that part, then you're just going to tug and you're going to be like, this doesn't work on my skin because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't actually remove my makeup. But if you just hold it there, it will. And so I'm just patting. And you can see, no makeup. So remember, this is just my first cleanse. I'm not expecting this to completely remove all of my makeup and the grime from the day. I'm just, you know, using it as my first cleanse to, that way my second cleanse can um, get the rest of it off, essentially. Right. Yes. Off I think we'll skin. stop there. So, yeah, um, interesting. So it's an interesting launcher to think. So. I would personally, I personally use an oil-based cleanser. I think um, I've got very oily skin. I think oil helps to break down some of that oil. I know it might seem counterintuitive to be using oil to remove oil, but actually it is a really good way of um, getting rid of oil and the excess sebum that's built up over the day. However, an oil cleanser isn't for everyone. And um, whilst I always say never, never, never go near makeup wipes because of the preservatives in there, they're, they're just, I've done a whole video on that, awful. Actually, if you do like that more um, in control form of um, cleansing, so putting something on a cotton pad and wiping it over the face, a micellar water is a really, really good option. So actually, yeah, I, I think it's a really good way of getting that first layer of sunscreen, of makeup, of debris, of pollutants that are on the top of the skin. Wiping it off with that is a, re is a really good way if you don't want to use an oil cleanser. Um, Garnier do one, which I think is really, really good. Um, Bioderma kicked off really with the original uh, micellar water and theirs is still I think probably one of the best and um, so I'll leave some links below but they're both really good products so if you do like micellar water definitely check it out um Susan's in a little bit of a um, diff different stage in her life so she's just um she's just finished um breastfeeding she's given birth so she's post-pregnancy and I get a lot of comments from um subscribers asking about how to deal with post pregnancy skin related issues so it's hyperpigmentation often often flares up during and after pregnancy you might have um hormonal changes well you'll certainly have hormonal changes in the body which can lead to dryness it might lead to excess oil so there's a lot of things that um can really change the skin as part of being pregnant and of course breastfeeding because your hormones don't go back to normal straight after um giving birth there's that gradual period and that's extended if you choose to breastfeed so I think um, I think I am planning to do a whole video on that, so I won't say too much in this video. But um, I think that's worth bearing in mind with some of the things she's going to be using in this video. And those washcloths, so those microfiber um, what cloths, they are fantastic if you want an alternative to makeup wipes. So makeup wipes are bad often because they a they are reusable. So you're just flushing them or putting them in the bin, and they end up in landfills. So, um, environmentally, they're horrendous. But also they've got loads of preservatives. Um, parabens and just things that really don't need to be on your skin in them so actually if you do want that sense of controlling your um controlling your cleanse using something like um akin to a um makeup wipe try one of these microfiber cloths i think they're really really good and um, obviously use them wash them they're reusable so their environmental impacts reduced so that's fantastic we should all be a bit more environmentally conscious and they do work they work far better than makeup wipes and they will work to with the cleanser to get that um to get that makeup that sunscreen and any oil off the skin so yeah give them a go i don't have one to recommend because i don't actually use one myself but i do know i have used them in the past and i do know lots of people that do um, with really good results as you can see from susan she seems to be getting that eye makeup off quite quickly with it so yeah absolutely try it out guys and we'll see let's go see what she uses for her second cleanse two because you don't want it to sit on your skin it's it's like leaving a cleanser on your skin you wouldn't just leave your cleanser on your skin all right so around this time i'd probably be in the shower and this is the cleanser i would use it's by crave beauty it's their matcha hemp hydrating cleanser this is a very nice cleanser it's a gel uh consistency it doesn't really foam up i don't tend to like foam cleansers there are some nice ones out there i i think i'm just kind of old school and when i think of foam cleansers i think of like sls and like really strong surfactants and stuff that are going to strip your skin this won't strip your skin and it will definitely cleanse everything so this is the next step i think a lot of people don't realize how important their cleanse is when it comes to their skincare and this would normally again this would be a little bit more damp so it'd be lathering up a little bit more but you can see that it has slips so my fingers are gliding over my skin really easily and I'm just making sure I'm really cleansing because everything that you had on your skin that day 
you know, it's just not good to leave it there and go to sleep with it because your skin is repairing itself at night. And I think of the nighttime routine, my friend Nina Desai, she's a board certified dermatologist. She said it perfectly to me. She was like, your nighttime routine is when you repair your skin and your morning routine is when you protect your skin. Yes, clean skin should never be squeaky skin. All right, so while my skin... Right, so I'll stop there. So, yeah, so Susan makes some fantastic points there, I think. Um, that, I love, 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 love that cleanser. Um, it is absolutely phenomenal. It is, it smells great. It's all natural. So if you're into your clean beauty, your clean skincare, it's a fantastic option. It is genuinely, genuinely one of the best cleansers I've ever used. Um, it doesn't dry out the skin. It leaves it nice and moisturised. It gets everything off. It's fine. Problem is, since influencers have started promoting it, you just cannot buy it. It's sold out everywhere. So if you can get your hands on it, definitely, definitely, definitely buy it. It's a must have. I used it, fell in love with it, haven't been able to get it since. So if you do find it, <laughs> send me some because it is absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, fully recommend that. And Susan's completely right. The cleanse is, in fact, in my view, the most important part of your routine because what is the point of doing all these gorgeous treatments, these actives, these ingredients, you're putting them on filthy, clogged um, skin. There's no point. So if you've not got your cleanse down, there's actually no point doing any of the steps afterwards. So when people often say to me, what would you take? Desert Island? What would you be saying? It would have to be a cleanser because actually there's no point doing anything else if you're not cleansing. So I think, yeah, actually, it's a really good point. If you can get that cleanser, get it because it is fantastic. But yeah, absolutely right. I would normally go for a a gel cleanser rather than a foaming cleanser just because I do think foaming by the nature of it you have to put um lots of surfactants in to get that foam and they do not all but most of them will dry the skin out to some extent I just don't think it's needed and um, you get just as good a cleanse from something like that but better cleanse from a cleanser like that so definitely try that one out and it's still damp I'm gonna try to get this on there it's by New Face it is their uh gel primer and I'm gonna leave it open I go through a ton of this when I'm using it but I'm gonna start with one layer and I'm gonna put it on almost like if it's a sleep mask and I'm gonna go up my neck. I know I have my necklace on guys, I'm sorry. I just don't really take it off. And I'm gonna use this, this is the new face. I've had this for almost a decade, it's not a joke. And it's something that I come back to. Um, you wanna have your gel primer ready to go. You can use an HA serum like, um, and HA stands for hyaluronic acid, but I find that this is a little bit thicker and you might get a little zing here and there if you don't have enough slip. Um, and you know formula like between you and the device but what this does is it's microcurrent and microcurrent helps to tighten your skin I couldn't use it while I was pregnant because it's one of those things that you can't use while pregnant so I have it back so what people don't think about with pregnancy is you're literally gaining a ton of weight I gained this last pregnancy I gained 40 pounds and I've lost in just a few months at least half of that so I'm gonna start here right at like the collarbone and I'm gonna go up with it really slowly you gotta make sure you have that slide, you don't wanna tug. Hold, and I can feel it. And so when you're losing weight, you lose that elasticity in your skin. And people think about that in their bodies, right? Like you lose all of that elasticity and your skin starts to hang. The same thing happens with your face and your neck. And as you get older, you start to really notice that again. And it's kind of like exercise. So you wanna make sure that you maintain it and you keep using it because it's helping, it's helping to tighten all of your muscles essentially. All right, so normally right after I've Right. Well, I think that is a fantastic, a fantastic product. Um, I, I do really believe in the benefits of massage, facial massage. I've done a whole video on it and tools like this can really, we saw some in the Paris Hilton video, a skincare reaction I did. But my issue with these are they are mega expensive. So all these sort of tools and implements are really expensive that one is around 400 to 450 dollars that's a lot of money okay you've got 10 years use out of it so you know fantastic uh, actually 45 dollars per year really not that much it's cheaper than a facial so from that perspective fantastic i just don't think a lot of people have for 450 dollars to fork out so you can achieve similar results by having a really good facial massage routine i won't go into too much detail with it now because i have got my a whole video on it which i'll link up there whole video detailing the benefits of facial massage and how to do it and a quick routine it takes five minutes so it's the same amount of time as what susan is investing in this five minutes and you're good to go and it will help tighten the skin here it'll help relieve any tension that you've got and just really keep it tight first signs of 
raging here, here, and around the eye. So massage is really gonna help um, to prevent that. That product, the primer, is actually just a really thick hyaluronic acid serum. Um, it's quite expensive, but it is quite good. So if you want something thick like that, it's fine. For the facial massage that I do, I actually do it as part of my cleansing routine. So I'd use a square lane cleanser four or five dollars so much cheaper and you still get that slip absolutely right what you don't want to be doing at any point with any tools that you use be it a jade roller one of the microcurrent machines or just your own hands with the manual massage is you should never be tugging on the skin so let it glide glide over the skin um, and that way you're not pulling and increasing those wrinkles and tears that you might get in the skin but yeah great product if you could afford it it's worth looking at if you can't just use a manual uh, massage with your hands and watch the video and it will show you how to do that I will go right into a moisturizer because the new face is essentially a hyaluronic acid serum and okay. you want to lock Just in that, that. that hydration that you're getting from it because it's a humectant and you don't want it to actually, you know, take out the moisture from your actual skin. So you want to lock it in and that's what your moisturizer is going to do. Yeah, she's so right there, guys. What you do need to do is make sure that you, as soon as you use your product, make sure that you lock everything in with the moisturizer because if you leave it without moisture too long all that's going to happen is the skin is going to be um drying out so yeah she's right this moisturizer is by biosance it's their squalane and omega repair cream i've been using this for a couple of years i go back to it it's not fragranced which i think is super important when you're doing especially um treatments like the laser treatment and everything and also for the next step that you guys will see it's going to be retinol um I also just like squalane. I really do. I think it works very well on my skin. So I'm locking everything in. I tend to like wipe and then pat. So I'm not just smearing it off of my skin. Um, I don't really go up, but I definitely pat it. And truly it's just so that it really goes on my skin and I'm not wiping it off. To me, moisturizer is really important. It's, it is a non-negotiable for me. And I know some people with like oily skin will say that they don't need to, but the oil that you produce is completely different than the moisturizer that you're going to use. One of the big issues I find in skincare is that people aren't patient. They want to see results immediately and they don't want to go, they don't want to go through like the steps, like the beat Great to phrase. To go through. And it's so important to have patience. It's actually something I had to learn. I, I didn't have any patience. Um, and what we tend to find is that people will just go like balls to the wall. Like they're kind of like, I'm just going to go with this. I, I'm going to go from like zero skincare routine to like a 12 step skincare routine, or I'm going to introduce a really strong retinoid into my skincare routine, but I'm going to use it every single night and not, you know, watch how my skin reacts to it. And then they end up with this irritation. Their skin is breaking. It's dry. It's right. flaky. Totally agree. Um, I, you know, I think I've always said start small and work your way up. So start with the weaker and work your way up. Use it infrequently and build up the frequency. All products need to build a tolerance in the skin. So don't just go straight in with a hard vitamin C, retinol, whatever you're using. Don't go straight in and use the hardest, um, the strongest. You, what you're going to do is experience um, side effects and then not want to use it again. It's actually better to use it gradually over time, build up your tolerance, and then it'll become part habit, part of your routine, and you'll actually enjoy the product as opposed to um, dreading using it and less likely to use it as a result. I actually don't like that Biosense um, moisturizer. I, I like Squalane as a... I enjoy it as a cleanser. As a moisturizer, it sits on the skin, and I, there is a difference between square lane and square lean. It's a very, it, the chemically, it's a little slightly different, one's less likely, so the moisturizer is less likely to clog your pores. So I still find if I use it, I do break out a little bit. So it's personal preference. I'm much more on the oily side, and therefore I do break out much more easily. Um, and so I do find that there's a risk of clogged pores with that product, so I don't use it. Um, it's a very popular product. Um, it's uh, it's one of those cleaner products, so they have actually stripped out some of the fragrances and things that are quite bad, um, and what I don't like in skincare. So I like the brand, and I like the ethos of it. I just find that's a little bit too... Um, it's a little bit too likely to clog my pores for my skin. Um, but if you've got dry skin or you don't really get breakouts, it's a fantastic option. So yeah, definitely, definitely give it a go if that's for you. All right, so I went out and bought this. I actually have like a whole collection of different retinoids that I'm going to start introducing into my routine. Um, this is kind of strong though, so I don't need a lot. I actually just bought a sample size because I know I'm not going to stay, I'm not going to use it for too long. It's 1% retinol. It's by Drunk Elephant. It's their A Passioni 
retinol cream. And what I want to show you guys, this is the, this is the important part. 1% is kind of strong and it's actually, that's more than I'm probably going to end up using. So I want to show you guys this. When someone says use a pea size of your retinoid, truly, when you're just starting off, I'm only going to use this once a week for the next couple of weeks because I'm just getting back into the retinoid game. It's been over a year because I was pregnant. It felt like I was like forever pregnant and I'm just going to, you know, smear it together. I'm just going to tap it into my skin and I'm actually going to avoid my neck because I've been getting these laser treatments. The neck is really, really a sensitive area and you don't want to make it too sensitive. So I know that I'm still trying to get back into this and I know I'm doing these laser treatments and the skin is thinner in your neck area. So you don't want to necessarily get it there. I got my moisturizer there. I got my, you know, my HA serum there. So it has some treatment and it's good to go right now. I will eventually, you know, use a little bit of retinol there later on, but I don't need to right now. And I'm tapping around my eyes because I don't use an eye cream at night. I feel like I'm getting everything I need for my skin in this whole routine. And it doesn't have to be an elaborate routine for it to be an effective routine. I'm right. Okay. Right. So we're actually going to stop there. And um, her next step in this video is to use a lip balm. I just don't like lip balms. I, I think they actually dry out your skin. A lot of the ingredients, particularly the menthols and some of the um, petroleum jellies and things that are actually more likely to dry out the skin over time than actually replenish any of the moisture. So I don't like a lip balm. I don't think, you know, a lot of people say if you don't wear a lip balm before you go to bed, you wake up and your lips are so dry and chapped. That's because you're using a lip balm. I've never used a lip balm, I never have dry lips, and I never wake up with dry lips. So it's a bit of a myth that's out there. Um, you don't need a lip balm. If you do want to use one and you do find you suffer with something, particularly if you want like Accutane or there's a medical reason for that dryness, then something like the Cilloplast um, by La Roche-Posay is a fantastic, fantastic lip balm. And that will actually add um, moisture back in and will actually heal the skin as opposed to just putting a layer of thick, occlusive um moisture on there you, you just don't need it so i'll skip the last step um in terms of the retinol it's a fantastic product i'm glad she's included in retinol because a lot of what we see with the celebrities they're using all the fancy products they're using all the names all the brands and not them are actually using a retinol so retinol is one of the few products one of the few ingredients sorry that's actually scientifically proven to reverse the signs of aging so it'll build collagen it'll give you that plump feeling in your skin it increases cell turnover if you too. get that more glowy skin as the new cells are coming to the fore so it's one of the few products that's actually scientifically proven to reduce the signs of aging so everybody everybody should have one in their um in their routine now there are a lot i've done a whole video on retinol so do check that out but there's a whole different um, range of retinols that you should use depending on whether you've got acne skin, whether you've got dry skin. There's different ones to suit each skin type and different formulations as well. Creams, there's gels. So because this Drunk Elephant one is fantastic. In fact, I've got a video um, the me, I, ch I changed to this. I used to be on a prescription retinol. Um, it just got too much hassle to keep going to the, um, get rid of the prescription stuff where you can buy this over the counter. Um, and actually, I love this product. I actually think it is better because of some of the added ingredients in there as well and fruit extracts and things that help moisturize. I think it's a better project, um, product than the prescription retinol that I was on. So absolutely, absolutely give this product a try, but just be really careful. So Susan's going in once a week because she's just getting back into retinol. I actually think that's too infrequently. Um, she knows her skin and she knows what she wants to do. You know, skincare's personal. She can do whatever she wants. For me, I think if you're getting into retinol, I start using it twice a week and then I go to three times a week, four times a week, and then up to every single night. Um, I don't think you need to start that gradually. I think it's just prolonging the period of time. You don't go in and use every night. That's a very strong retinol is the drunk elephant one. So don't go in straight away and using the strongest, strongest retinol and every night because you will see a lot of inflammation, peeling, redness, dry. It's not, it's not worth it. Let your skin, skin build up the tolerance to it. But I think once a week is just a bit infrequent. You're just drawing out the time at which you'll see a difference. So I personally would start with twice a week, but it's personal preference. And like I say, Susan knows her skin. Um, she's right about that neck as well. I don't actually take my retinol onto my neck just because my neck is super sensitive and whatever strength I use and however infrequently I use it, it just itches and burns and it's just not worth it. So for me, I can't do that. But if you can, take it onto the neck, but just be very careful because that is a super sensitive area, quite thin skin as well. So Susan Yara, that's her skincare routine. Well, 
I'm no less of a fan as what I was before. I adore Susan. I think she's fantastic. I think she's done loads and loads to really change up the industry and bring people's awareness of ingredients and products and skincare. She's fantastic. She's one of my personal heroes and she inspires me a lot. So I don't want to say anything too negative. If I was going to critique anything, I think I'd use the, I'd start off with using the retinol a little bit more frequently, and particularly as you're using it on top of a moisturizer, so you're not getting that full impact straight away. I'd use it twice a week, not once a week, so you get the results a little bit quicker. Um, for me, I don't like that Biosense moisturizer, but it is, it is good. I just think... For a moisturiser, you should just be going cheap and cheerful. There's some really super cheap moisturisers out there that do what they need to do. Don't spend extra money on something that's just there to hydrate. I personally would just get something like the um, Natural Moisturising Factors by The Ordinary. It's fantastic. It's £4 here in the UK, $6 in the US, and it does the job. So for me, I'd switch that out and you know invest that money in other actives and things i love the massage the um i love the microcurrent technology she was using and um, again there's cheaper alternatives but definitely get some form of massage into your routine so i think that's a really really strong point and her cleanser game is on point because all of those cleansers are fantastic um, and if you can get that match your hen cleanser use it and buy it because it is fantastic so thank you very much for joining us on this video leave a comment of any celebrities you want us to cover there's loads out there and i'd love i mean i'd love to do them all but you know we don't have time to do every single celebrity so let us know the ones that you're going to be really interested in and i'll include them in the next video and um, give it a thumbs up because it really helps to grow our channel and the amount of support we've got has been overwhelming so thank you so 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 much guys but and um, to keep growing we need all those thumbs up so let us know that you like the video and i'll see you in the next one guys take care bye